The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. These words of Jesus are easy to say, but difficult to live by, as most of Jesus' teachings are. To be a servant, to consider first the good of the other, the needs of the other. I have in mind that image of Anthony Hopkins quietly serving in the movie Remains of the Day, always in the background, never thrusting himself forward, quietly and efficiently seeing to the needs of the house, never putting himself central. It is an image we like to watch on film, but rarely would seek to emulate in our own lives. Well, that's modern storytelling for you. The intersection of modern storytelling and the Christian ethos can be found in the second greatest book ever written, The Lord of the Rings. I'm reading that to our boys as a bedtime story right now, chapter by chapter, and as the story unfolds, something emerges. The great heroes of the world are lining up to do battle with the great powers of evil. All of the towering figures, Aragorn, Theoden, Gandalf, Gladriel, etc., are all engaged in this massive struggle. And yet, who is the one given the task of carrying the ring? Who is the one for whom it has been appointed, according to Elrond, the wise? For whom has this task been appointed? Frodo, the hobbit. Hobbits, the little people. J.R.R. Tolkien's take on the common English farmer. They are nobodies in the world of Middle-earth. In fact, most of the other characters, when they meet the hobbits, have never even heard of them, or have heard of them only as legends, far off on the edges of their imagination. Nobody knows where their homeland is. Nobody even knows where the Shire is located. It, it actually becomes a plot point. As the evil forces are seeking for the hobbits, they can't find them because they're not even on the map. They're nobodies. And Sauron, the great evil presence in Middle-earth, is so focused on the powerful and mighty, the kings and the leaders of his opponents, that he entirely misses the little hobbit quietly carrying the ring into Mordor to destroy it. Tolkien, a devout Christian himself, is telling us the power of the humble and the small, the power of the one who does not seek his own glory, but seeks rather to serve. Frodo doesn't want to go on this quest, he does not want this task, but he knows he must do it. And if this isn't driven home strong enough, when even Frodo fails and can go no further, his loyal servant Sam carries him and is ultimately the strongest character in the entire book. Tolkien turns this brief passage into an epic quest. What does it look like to become the servant of all? Now, in your life and in mine, we are very unlikely to be given a magic ring and asked to take it to the nearest volcano and cast it in. But we will be asked to carry burdens for one another. We will be asked to accompany one another into the heart of darkness. We will be asked to give of ourselves for the good of another. That is human life, and that is the Christian ethos. Jesus' disciples, as usual, have missed the point, and here come James and John seeking special treatment. They want to sit at the right and left hand of Jesus. They want to be close to the throne. Not to lean too heavily on Tolkien, but who else wants to be close to the throne? Grima Wormtongue, one of the most wicked characters in the entire trilogy. Anyhow, James and John want seats of honor. They want to be picked out as special, utterly missing what Jesus has been preaching and teaching, and most of all what he has been demonstrating. The nations of the world vie for positions of power. You are to vie for positions of service. This is something beautiful, written into the rule of St. Benedict, an ancient rule for the ordering of monasteries and convents, which to this day is the standard of monastic practice. 
Benedict writes in his rule that the monks should each try to be the first to show respect to the other, and earnestly competing in obedience to one another. They are to compete in humility. They are to attempt to outdo one another in humility. This is in utter contradiction to the modern preoccupation with honoring ourselves and validating ourselves and claiming our space, which is lovely in concept, but in practice turns into a whole bunch of people jostling and pushing each other for status. Here, in the rule of Benedict, the status that one seeks is to put the other ahead, to honor and respect the other, to obey the other. Imagine the difference in a world organized on those principles. Well, we're not supposed to imagine it. We are supposed to embody it as the church. We are supposed to live it out, showing by our lives what the humility of Christ looks like in action. Whoever would become great among you must be a servant. The race that we run, the goal that we seek, is to be of loving service to one another and to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.